It's no perfect, but there has to, you can't have, for instance, in this situation, it would be Rangers playing 20 home games and 18 away games. And if Rangers then won the, won the league, <laughs> based on, it's just that. carnage. You know, so there needs to be 19-19. Must see that, Robert. I know you're a Rangers fan. We couldn't get to the end of the season. Rangers play 20 home, 18 away. Guys, I, I totally take the point. I take the point. But I suppose the point it leaves me with is the split cannot deliver sporting integrity. Good morning. And welcome back to the One Celtic Fans View. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up to reach as many Celtic fans as possible. Now, as expected, once the split came out, there'd be... A little bit of a meltdown from them. Let's listen to them. Only played Hearts at home once, so they're due to play Hearts at home. That's fine. Yeah. They're due to play, they've only played Rangers at home once, so that's fine. Mm -hmm. Play Rangers home at once. Um, but all the other teams that are left, um, they've only played them away once. So why are they getting an extra home game and the opposite for Rangers? I don't understand how you couldn't have just played those fixtures out the way they would have normally played out if you didn't have a split. Because then... And there lies the problem with the split. I've said the split has passed its sell-by date, and I don't like agreeing with a Rangers fan, but it's, um, it is past its sell-by date. It's mo the most ridiculous thing in football to have a split in the middle of your league, which means that the I always say it. I mean, the team that finishes seventh should feel hard done by because they could end up with more points, which then cost them money. Because remember, you get your, it's not just the positions that you get, it's the points that you get. And, you know, if you can't, anyway, let's listen to this clown. And then you would be playing, at the end of the season, you would have played an unequal amount of home games versus away games. So that's the bit they have right. to, to, they have to, you have to redress that first as your priority, don't you? If we have a league then at the end of the season where teams have played different amount of home games and away games, you'd be on the phone, you know, complaining about that. As I've said, it isn't perfect, but this isn't, this is not that controversial, Kenny. No, as you, as no. you say, I was in the no last controversial because your mind wanders when you're on this show. And after. It's not as controversial as some of the penalty decisions that's been given to that club over the season, is it? Not really. Again, given, happen. given everything that's true, mm -hmm. these phone lines will blow up. I saw the fixtures today and I thought, do you know what? As we acknowledge, the split's never perfect. There's always going to be a team misses out here or there. But that's that's kind of fine. There's no drama. And I, I think the phones would have blew up also had Rangers had to go back to Dundee for a third time after all these shenanigans over the last two weeks. So, great and fast. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great and fast. So anyway, the the, uh, the fixtures are out. Uh, we play Dundee uh, away on April the 28th. Hearts at home on May the 4th be with you. May the 4th be with you. And then it is the third game of the fixture. Third game of the fixture, which will be at home to them, the Rangers. Yes, the Safeco who are Rangers in disguise. You're not just Rangers in disguise. Yes, you are. You're Rangers in disguise. Anyway, and then we're going to Kilmarnock. Uh, Kilmarnock away, the second last game of the season. And remember, it was right at the beginning of the season that we played Kilmarnock away and we lost. Um, I've got to say, when you look at those two games, I mean, you look at those games together, um, obviously the Hearts at home, you think that's going to take care of itself, but it'll be a tricky game. It will be a tricky game. And then obviously the Rangers at home, that's two back-to-back -back pretty hard games at home. And then Kilmarnock away, which is another fixture that has thrown the spanner in the works several times over the last season. And then we're home to St Mirren on the final day of the season. Will it be the fact that if, if they drop points, if they drop points. So what exactly is needed for Celtic to win the league? Obviously, defeating the rivals uh, rivals on the Derby on the 11th of May at Parkhead will go a long way. However, it will still be mathematically possible if the stars align, or should we say the results? Yes, Celtic currently hold a four-point lead over the Rangers. Uh, they play this evening. Yes, they play this evening. Uh, yes, it is this evening. I had to check what day I was on there. Um, they, they do play this evening with a chance to secure their um, little gap to reduce that gap. And it would reduce to just the one point. But if all hell was to break loose and Dundee were to get some kind of result, the Rangers would need to drop points against Dundee again, uh, St. Mern, Kilmarnock and Celtic. So let's, let's not even worry about what 
is required mathematically. Let's just win every single game. I think when we look at it, and people, I was getting comments last night and seeing messages last night on WhatsApp saying, yeah, if we do this, if this happens, if this happens, you know, we could win it at Parkhead. If not, we're going to win it away at Kilmarnock. Um, so let's, 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 just, let's just win every game. Let's just do what the team do. Take one game at a time. Make sure that we win every game. Back the team like we've never backed it before because this is the point of the season where the team really needs us in the stands. They need everyone making as much noise for every single home game. None of this sweetie rapper pish in the Celtic end. None of this, you know, get everyone up for the full 90 minutes making as much noise as possible because they need us. The team needs us to get them over the line. If Rangers were to collect, well, Rangers can't collect maximum points because we're going to beat them. We only need to beat them. If um, they get defeated at Celtic Park, it's pretty much done and dusted as far as I'm concerned. I still think that they might drop points. I still think Celtic could win the league by seven points. And what a turnaround it will be. But then we need to look. And it's then at that point, once we've won the league, we'll sit and look back before the cup final. We'll sit and look back in the season. And then even during the, during the close season, this channel will still be going fully twice a day during the close season, just like we did last summer. So make sure you subscribe to the channel for that, just on its own merit. And um, we'll talk about, we'll go over the season, no matter what happens, uh, if, we, if we win the league or if, 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 if we lose it, we're still going to be here talking about the season. Um, hopefully we will win it. I think that we can win it. It is in our own hands. They are not favourites anymore. Anyway, Celtic have, um, obviously the, the fixtures were released yesterday and... You know, is it is it a fair set of fixtures? It is what it is. It is the top six. Anyway, there's a little transfer speculation news going around about a Celtic player this morning again. And a, Celt a European giant has been said. A European giant is set to move for a Celtic player that is out of contract at the end of the season. And the little shit hasn't still signed the contract. Get him out the door and sling his hook. He's one of these younger players that think that he's um, a way above his level, and it's Rocco Vata. Now, there's a lot of people saying, there was people saying that knew him, that he was going to sign this contract. He's had a contract sitting in front of him for months now, and as far as I'm concerned, if Lazio want him, Lazio can take him. I don't think he's done anything to prove. I mean, when you look at you've got Daniel Kelly who's coming to the team. He's got his head down. You know, he's a, he's a fantastic little player, and I still say to this day, he will be the man that and ultimately takes over the captaincy of Celtic in his future years. And mark my word by that, I do think that he will be one of those players, that he will be that player that will take over for Callum McGregor in years to come. And I, I give that shout to Callum when he came through the system. And I was knocked down on my arse by people on the Joseph Rafferty bus saying, nah, he's pish, he's pish. And then he went out on loan and came back and he turned out to be the player that I thought he was going to be. Um, sometimes you just see a little thing in a player and you think, yeah, he's he's got it. He has got it in him. Rocco Vata, on the other hand, fucking get him out the door. I'm, I'm, I'm fed up with these players that I think that, look, even if he does sign a new contract, he'll be, we want him. He'll, he's a disruptive player, if you ask me. You know, he thinks he's a bit better. He's only 18 years of age. He can play in a, a number of roles. He scored 12 goals in 15 Lowland League games this campaign. He's also made three appearances under Brendan Rodgers. But the fact that he's not signed that deal is probably why Brendan Rodgers has dropped him out of the team and said, look, lad, if you're, if you're, if you're not going to stay, if you're not going to stay, I'm not going to put you in the team. It's as simple as that. And, and that's a blunt reality to young Rocco Vata. That Brendan Rodgers will say, well, young Daniel Kelly wants to stay here. He wants to be here. So he's in the team. He's on the bench for certain games. And he'll probably be on the bench again in the running. And he might get some cameo appearances towards the end of the season. Well, Vata, who's still not signed that deal, is not getting anywhere near it. And so, you know, who cares? Who cares? Captain McGregor says that... Um, Talking about academy players, he says, look, Vata has shown really good promise in the academy. He scored a few goals for the B team, which is great, and that's what we want. We want to be pushing on as many day, as many academy products as we can, trying to expose them at first team football and trying to get them to that level where they can step into the team. So if you hadn't noticed uh, during this video, I'm wearing one of my original tops. Tell me what year in the comments this was a Celtic favourite. And I, oh, I know who you're going to say will be your favourite player to have adorned this top. Right at the beginning of his Celtic career, who would have went, who would have thought that he went on to be such a legend for Celtic when he wore this top? Yep, give me the name in the comments and give me the year that this was the Celtic top 
of choice. Anyway, that comes to the end of the video. Make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, make sure that you do because we're trying to hit to the big 16,000 before the end of the season. Um, I'm not sure what, if I'll be able to do on a live tonight. Apologies, I didn't do it live last night. I was away up in Benidorm. If you've seen the comments, uh, if you've seen the community tab section. So yeah, I was away out for the day. Um, there, I'm going to the airport tonight. Uh, so yeah, there should be there should be a, a live later on this evening where we can talk about the split and we can talk about everything Celtic. And on that note, there might be an update during the day. We'll see. We'll see. On that note, have a fantastic day, Celtic fans all around the world. Let roll up to the party. Roll up, roll up to the party. Roll up to the party.